Step into a world of glitz and glamour from the golden age of Hollywood. Explore a timeless cinematic masterpiece from the 1930s that has left an indelible mark on audiences worldwide. This captivating film, filled with laughter, surprises, and a hint of sadness, continues to enchant viewers even today. As you embark on this journey through the opulence of ancient Egypt, prepare to be mesmerized by the stellar performances of legendary actors. From unexpected plot twists to unforgettable characters, this movie has it all. Reflect on your own experiences and memories tied to this cinematic gem. Share your stories and personal connections in the comments below and join in on the discussion. Your input is what truly brings this cinematic puzzle to life. So sit back, relax, and let the nostalgia wash over you as you delve into the magic of this timeless classic. Keep watching, keep sharing, and stay tuned for more insights from the golden era of Hollywood. In the 1934 film, a lengthy story unfolds over an hour and 40 minutes, largely due to its heavy dialogue. The plot draws from the famous love story of an Egyptian queen, but doesn't quite hit the mark in its execution. There are interesting changes from previous versions like when one character proposes to another to get rid of someone else adding tension. The main actors give solid performances, with one actor standing out as Caesar and another convincingly portraying Antony. However, the lead role lacks the charm it needs and another character's casting feels off. The movie's extravagant sets and its take on ancient times add to its visual appeal, although they may be a bit exaggerated. Despite its flaws, comparing it to a recent TV series highlights its weak points in storytelling and character development. In short, while it has some interesting aspects, it doesn't quite reach its full potential, especially when compared to newer versions of the same story. In the realm of classic cinema, a particular film from the 1930s stands out as a true gem. It marked a milestone for its acclaimed director, securing the first Academy Award. Notably, the film earned recognition for its exceptional cinematography, with a talented individual receiving the prestigious accolade. However, the production faced an unexpected challenge during a pivotal scene featuring a seduction. The complexity arose from the unpredictability of a certain animal, which disrupted initial takes by leaving an unexpected mess on set. Following its production, the film became part of a vast catalog, joining hundreds of other productions. Eventually, it found its way into television distribution, despite initial legal hurdles. Among these films, it stood out as a centerpiece in a renowned film library. Its telecast commenced in various locations, gaining popularity as a local television favorite with prime weekend slots across the country. The film's journey continued with releases on DVD, eventually becoming part of a celebrated collection. Today, the film has been fully restored, occasionally gracing television screens for modern audiences to enjoy. In summary, this cinematic journey extends beyond its initial production, earning it a place in both historical and contemporary film landscapes. Amidst the making of this amazing movie, unexpected problems popped up, spicing up the behind-the-scenes story. The main actress, Claudette Colbert, got sick for a whole week, causing a pause in filming. This made the crew adjust their plans to work around her absence. At the same time, another actor, Irving Pitchell, did something pretty cool. He acted in a stage play while still working on the film. Doing both things at once added a neat twist to the project and showed how talented he was. One thing people really liked was how the movie included African-American actors in important roles. This got attention in a newspaper column called Behind the Scenes with Harry and the California Eagle. The column praised the movie for being inclusive and showing different kinds of people. Dealing with challenges, the dedication of Claudette Colbert and Irving Pitchell and including African-American actors all played a part in making this movie great. The stories from behind the scenes show not just how artistic the project was, but also how everyone worked together. This movie is a reminder of the hard work and teamwork that went into making it, leaving a lasting impression in the world of movies. In the early stages of the film's creation, the director aimed to screen an old Cleopatra film from 1917. However, the only available copy was borrowed from Fox's office in New York, as there were no prints in Los Angeles. Unfortunately, a fire in a New Jersey storage facility on 7937 destroyed most of Fox's archive prints, including the borrowed Cleopatra. It's likely that the viewing in 2185 and 34 was one of the last times anyone saw the legendary movie. A familiar face and eight Best Picture nominees, David Niven made uncredited appearances, including in Cleopatra. Mutiny on the Bounty and Around the World in 80 Days were among these, with both films claiming victory. Cecil B. DeMille's Cleopatra stood out as his first film nominated for the Academy Award for Best Picture, 
then known as Outstanding Production. Later, The Greatest Show on Earth, which won, and The Ten Commandments also earned nominations. In total, Niven's presence in various acclaimed films and DeMille's journey and Oscar nominations contribute to the rich history of Hollywood. Discovering and preserving these cinematic gems is crucial, considering the unfortunate loss of historical prints in the Fox Storage Facility fire. Bethino's, portrayed in an extremely virile fashion by Leonard Muti, was in fact a eunuch. In 1956, Cecil B. DeMille remembered Claudette Colbert wanted to do something different with Cleopatra, not make her lofty or fussy or superstitious, nothing like that. She set out to give her humor and humanity, and she stamped her own personality on the role. She emerged from it most vividly, I thought. Ian Keith appeared in five Cecil B. DeMille films, The Sign of the Cross, Cleopatra, The Crusades, The Buccaneer, and The Ten Commandments. The second and the fifth were nominated for the Academy Award for Best Picture. In the world of cinema, connections between actors and directors often shape the course of film history. Take, for instance, a notable collaboration between a renowned director and a beloved actress. Their partnership birthed iconic characters and left a lasting impression on the portrayal of strong women in movies. Over the years, this actress worked closely with a director, starring in multiple films that showcased her talent and charisma. Despite declining a role in a later production, her influence persisted, inspiring casting decisions that echoed her presence on screen. Another actress, selected for her resemblance to her predecessor, stepped into a role that underscored the enduring impact of the original portrayal. Through these interconnected roles and performances, the director's cinematic universe flourished, leaving an undeniable impact on the representation of powerful female characters in film. In a bygone era of Hollywood, a remarkable story unfolded behind the scenes of a legendary film. During the casting process, the director encountered unexpected talents and faced challenges that ultimately shaped the course of the movie. A young actress, initially objected to by one of the stars, was given a chance to shine in a role tailored to her presence. Similarly, a newcomer caught the director's eye through sheer luck, earning a significant part in the film. These anecdotes offer a glimpse into the intricate decisions and strokes of fortune that influenced the making of this iconic cinematic production. In the history of American movies, few have made such a lasting impact as the 1934 version of a famous Queen story. It became incredibly popular, ruling as the top movie in the U.S. that year. When the director and the lead actress discussed her role as the Queen, she felt quite nervous, especially about a scene with a snake. She had a strong fear of snakes. But the director, always creative, came up with a smart solution. Instead of the big snake she dreaded, he surprised her with a small one so she could film the scene without fear. In a newspaper article from 1934, an actress who played the same role in an earlier version shared her thoughts on the new casting. At first, she wasn't sure, but she believed the new actress could do it. She talked about how the queen wasn't just about seduction, but also about being a mother and a homemaker. She thought the new actress, with the director's guidance, could bring out all the sides of the character that the audience wanted to see. In classic movies, the 1934 Queen story shows how fascinating historical figures can be when brought to life by a talented team. In his autobiography, Henry Wilcoxon recounted an intense incident during the making of the movie. Director Cecil B. DeMille determined that Roman soldier extras mastered ancient combat, engaged Wilcoxon in an unexpected duel. Seizing a spear from an extra, DeMille charged at Wilcoxon, who instinctively fought back with his sword. After a fierce two-minute struggle, Wilcoxon managed to cut the tip off DeMille's spear. Satisfied with the display, DeMille warned the extras that if they weren't willing to fight similarly, they could leave. Half of them chose to exit. During the production of Cleopatra in 1934, DeMille strategically challenged the emerging Hayes Code. As the code's restrictions were just taking effect, DeMille opened the film with a scene featuring an apparently naked slave girl, subtly illuminated, holding incense burners as the title appeared on screen. Actress Claudette Colbert, not initially associated with vampiric roles, received an unexpected endorsement from Theta Barra in 1934. Barra predicted that Colbert, despite not fitting the traditional vampire mold, would deliver an excellent performance in Cleopatra. The movie not only showcased DeMille's determination and historical accuracy, but also his defiance of emerging censorship norms. Colbert's unexpected endorsement added a layer of intrigue to the film, setting the stage for Cleopatra's unique place in cinematic history. Amidst the aftermath of Cecil B. DeMille's previous cinematic disappointment, Paramount's demand for another historical spectacle loomed large. 
Urged by Adolf Zucker to replicate past successes, Demille embarked on a journey to bring forth a grandiose production with ample doses of allure. However, amidst the grandeur, discord brewed within the costume department as designer Vicky Williams departed, citing organizational issues. Meanwhile, Claudette Colbert found herself at the pinnacle of recognition in 1934, with a trifecta of nominations for Best Picture at the Academy Awards. Among them stood Cleopatra, a film that showcased her talent alongside two other acclaimed productions. Yet, it was a happened one night that secured Colbert the coveted Academy Award for Best Actress, sealing her triumphant year in cinematic history. Cecil B. DeMille enlisted the expertise of production designer William Cameron Menzies for the montages in the 1934 movie. However, upon its screening in Rome, the film faced harsh criticism from Italian critics. Described as a travesty and a burlesque, it elicited catcalls and derisive laughter from the audience, as reported by Daily Variety. Despite the unfavorable reception, Claudette Colbert's portrayal of Cleopatra in August 1934 earned acclaim. The new movie magazine recognized her performance as the movie highlight of the year. This acknowledgement highlighted Colbert's noteworthy contribution to the film, a stark contrast to the reception it faced in Rome. In summary, the 1934 movie faced a rocky reception in Italy, but found redemption in Colbert's standout performance, acknowledged as the movie highlight of the year by the new movie magazine. Paramount showcased the 1934 film at the 1935 Soviet Film Festival in Moscow, an unexpected move that brought the movie to an international stage. During its production, the California Eagle noted the involvement of 24 carefully picked big black men hired on 30-day contracts to serve as Cleopatra's litter bearers. Simultaneously, an equal number of female extras, drawn from the Los Angeles Cotton Club, added authenticity to the seduction ballet on Cleopatra's barge, having previously showcased their talents as dancers. In the realm of accolades, the film stood out as the sole Best Picture nominee in 1934 also nominated for Best Cinematography. This dual recognition highlighted its cinematic prowess, distinguishing it from its contenders that year. The 1934 film Cleopatra left an imprint by not only venturing into international film festivals, but also by weaving a diverse ensemble into its narrative, drawing talents from unexpected places like the Los Angeles Cotton Club. Its unique position as the only Best Picture nominee concurrently acknowledged for Best Cinematography underscored its cinematic merit. In the 1930s, some actors and actresses left a lasting impact on the world of movies. One actress had a particularly remarkable year in 1934. She starred in a few movies that were considered for the top prize at the Oscars. One of these movies, It Happened One Night, ended up winning. Another actor also had a significant presence in these acclaimed films. He appeared in four of them, but only one emerged victorious at the Oscars. Interestingly, all these films were based on the lives of real people. This actress also worked closely with a famous director on three films during this time. They collaborated on movies like Cleopatra and The Sign of the Cross. Together, they made an impact on the movie industry. Overall, 1934 was a memorable year for these talented individuals and their contributions to cinema are still recognized today. In the world of classic cinema, there's a tale woven with brilliance starring an actor whose presence graced many of its scenes. This story unfolded against historical backdrops, capturing hearts and minds alike. One notable chapter stands out, a collaboration between a legendary director and a talented performer. It was a time when ambition clashed with power and the stage was set for an epic journey through ancient lands. As the narrative unfolds, we witness the rise and fall of empires, all brought to life by the masterful touch of cinema. This particular tale garnered attention, earning accolades, and etching its place in the annals of movie history. And so, the legacy endures a testament to the enduring magic of the silver screen. During the making of the film, Claudette Colbert encountered numerous issues with her costumes, often finding them ill-fitting, and returning them to the costume shop, causing delays in the filming schedule. The movie is one of three by Cecil B. DeMille set in ancient Rome, with the others being Manslaughter and The Sign of the Cross. Interestingly, it's one of only two films based on Cleopatra V.I.'s life to be nominated for an Academy Award for Best Picture the other being a later adaptation released in 1963. Claudette Colbert's aversion to being photographed from the right side did not hinder the filming of this production. Shot in approximately six weeks, the movie's budget amounted to $842,000, a sum that equates to over $17,500,000 in 2022. Sassel B. DeMille from the project's inception aimed to present the Cleopatra story to a broader audience. 
His motivation stemmed from a perception that previous renditions by William Shakespeare and George Bernard Shaw were deemed too highbrow. The film captures Colbert from every conceivable angle, debunking any hints of her alleged concerns. The swift and economical production process, coupled with DeMille's deliberate approach to making Cleopatra more accessible, resulted in a movie that achieved its objectives. During the 1930s, certain symbols held significant meaning, reflecting the political climate of the time. One such symbol was the Fasces, which symbolized power and unity. The movie from that era subtly incorporated this symbol, hinting at its relevance amidst the political undertones of the period. The director's fascination with ancient Egypt, evident in several of his works, further enriches the movie's context. This exploration of historical and biblical themes was a recurring motif in his filmography. The inclusion of such elements adds depth to the cultural and political commentary embedded within the film, making it a noteworthy piece of cinematic history. In reality, back then, Octavian was just 11 years old, not the grown-up portrayed in the movie. The film from 1934 features an inaccurate depiction of Octavian's age during those events. Warren William, a notable actor of that time, appeared in three Oscar Best Picture nominees Lady for a Day, Imitation of Life, and Cleopatra. His presence in multiple acclaimed films showcases his significant contribution to the cinema of the time. Robert Warwick, another actor in the same movie, was part of two Oscar Best Picture winners, The Life of Emile Zola and Gentleman's Agreement. He also featured in six other Best Picture nominees, further solidifying his role in the movie world of that period. These actors, through their roles in Cleopatra and other notable films, left a lasting impact on the history of cinema, contributing to the success of various acclaimed productions. Adolf Menju and John Gilbert were both offered the part of Caesar. Ultimately, the role went to Gilbert, who portrayed Caesar opposite Claudette Colbert's Cleopatra. Gilbert's performance added depth to the character, showcasing his charisma and authority on screen. Though Menju was considered for the part, it was Gilbert who embodied the essence of Caesar in the film. Their dynamic performances contributed to the compelling portrayal of the historical figures in the movie, enhancing the overall narrative. Gilbert's portrayal of Caesar remains a noteworthy aspect of the film, showcasing his talent as an actor and adding to the intrigue of the story. Amidst the glitz and glamour of Hollywood's golden age, a tale unfolded on the silver screen that left audiences in awe. One of the leading actors encountered a mishap during filming, leading to a significant delay in production. The actor, known for her dedication to her craft, endured a challenging recovery period, but ultimately returned to complete her role, showcasing true perseverance. The film, directed by a renowned filmmaker, transported viewers back to ancient Egypt with its stunning visuals and attention to historical detail. From the grandeur of the palace to the elaborate costumes, every aspect of the production reflected meticulous research and collaboration. The cast, led by a talented actress in the titular role, delivered memorable performances that brought the story to life. Despite facing obstacles along the way, the director and his team persevered, ultimately creating a cinematic masterpiece that continues to enthrall audiences today. During the making of the 1934 film Cleopatra, something unexpected happened on set. While shooting a scene with a heavy curtain, there was a problem with the equipment, and the curtain fell on actress Claudette Colbert. This accident caused Colbert to hurt her back badly. Despite the pain, she didn't give up on her role and kept going with the filming. Her determination to finish the movie, even when things got tough, shows how dedicated she was to portraying Cleopatra on the screen. In a remarkable turn of events, during the filming of a historical movie in 1934, the lead actress encountered an unfortunate accident. She sustained a back injury while shooting a scene where she was carried on a heavy throne. Despite the pain, she continued to act, showing her commitment to the role. The film delves into the life and reign of a legendary figure, presenting a detailed portrayal of their journey from power to downfall. Directed by a renowned filmmaker, the movie features extravagant sets and costumes that transport viewers to ancient times, immersing them in a world of luxury and drama. Although the film received mixed reviews initially, it has left a lasting impression on popular culture, influencing future depictions of the iconic figure on screen. With its compelling story and engaging performances, the movie continues to captivate audiences, resonating with themes of power, love, and betrayal. This cinematic work remains a significant contribution to film history, cherished for its exploration of historical narratives and timeless themes. It continues to fascinate audiences, ensuring its enduring legacy in the world of cinema. In one of the lesser-known tragedies of the 1934 film, 
a chilling fact emerges about the actor portraying Julius Caesar. Despite his notable performance, the actor Henry Wilcoxon suffered a personal tragedy during the filming. His wife, the esteemed actress and Cleopatra's co-star, Violet Campbell Cooper, passed away suddenly. This sorrowful event cast a somber shadow over the production, impacting not only Wilcoxon but the entire cast and crew, reminding them of the fragility of life amidst the grandeur of the set. Such a poignant moment serves as a stark reminder of the fleeting nature of existence, even in the midst of cinematic glory. In one of the most surprising twists of fate, tragedy struck the production of the 1934 movie Cleopatra when its lead actress, Claudette Colbert, suffered a severe injury during filming. While shooting a scene aboard a barge, a rigging broke, causing Colbert to fall and severely injure her back. Despite her pain, she continued to film for several weeks before collapsing on set. This incident not only delayed the production, but also left Colbert with chronic back pain for the rest of her life. Despite the setback, the film eventually premiered to critical acclaim, but the toll it took on Colbert's health remained a somber reminder of the risks involved in filmmaking. Amidst the production of Cleopatra in 1934, tragedy struck when one of the lead actors, Claudette Colbert, suffered severe burns during filming. The scene required her to submerge herself in a pool of milk but the hot lights used to enhance the scene caused the milk to curdle and scald her skin. Despite the excruciating pain, Colbert remained professional and continued shooting, resulting in a scene that added an unexpected layer of authenticity to her portrayal. This incident stands as a poignant reminder of the sacrifices made by actors in the pursuit of their craft. Amidst the glitz of Hollywood, tragedy struck during the filming of a historical drama in 1934. Lead actress Claudette Colbert suffered a severe back injury on set, prompting the filmmakers to adjust scenes and camera angles to accommodate her pain. Despite the setback, the movie continued production and was eventually completed. Directed by Cecil B. DeMille, the film tells the story of an Egyptian queen's romance with a Roman general. Colbert's dedication to her role, despite the challenges she faced, highlights the resilience of those involved in the filmmaking process. The incident serves as a reminder of the sacrifices made in the pursuit of cinematic excellence. In an unexpected twist, tragedy struck the 1934 movie production. Despite meticulous planning, a fire engulfed the sets, causing significant damage and delays. This incident led to immense setbacks and added to the already challenging production process. However, amidst the turmoil, the cast and crew persevered, displaying unwavering resilience and determination. Despite numerous obstacles, they managed to complete the film, showcasing their commitment to bringing the story to life on the silver screen. Despite the challenges faced during its production, the movie remains a testament to the dedication and perseverance of all those involved. Their efforts ensured that the captivating tale could be shared with audiences for generations to come. In a tragic twist, the 1934 movie Cleopatra faced a devastating setback during production when its original director, Cecil B. DeMille, had to step down due to health issues. This unexpected turn left the project in turmoil and significantly delayed its completion, causing distress among the cast and crew. Despite this setback, the film eventually found its footing under the direction of another filmmaker, but the initial setback remained a somber chapter in its production history. In an unexpected twist, tragedy befell the 1934 cinematic portrayal of a historical figure. Amidst the intense filming, the lead actress suffered a severe back injury. This incident added an unforeseen challenge to the production, testing the resilience of the entire team. During a crucial scene, the lead actress faced the unfortunate accident, intensifying the emotional depth of the already demanding scenes. Despite the pain, she persisted in her role, contributing to the authenticity of her character's struggles on screen. The repercussions of the injury extended beyond the immediate production hurdles, showcasing the sacrifices made in bringing this cinematic vision to life. As the team adapted to the unforeseen circumstances, they managed to overcome the challenges and complete the film. Despite the setbacks, the movie remains a significant piece of cinematic history, highlighting the dedication and perseverance of those involved. Its impact extends beyond its portrayal of a historical figure, revealing the untold stories of resilience behind the scenes.